Welcome to Talk to Brazil with Tom Riach, the business connector to business in Brazil. Welcome to Talk to Brazil, the business connection, the world's first English language internet radio program about business in Brazil since 2009. I'm Tom Riach, an American living in Brazil for many years and known as the king of networking and talking for my studio in Campinas, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Today's guest is Tristan Wright, and he's talking with us from Melbourne, Australia. Tristan is known as a business Sherpa, assisting small businesses to grow simply and sustainably. He is a business growth and simplification specialist at his company, Evolve to Grow, where he can help business persons simplify their workload, build confidence, and grow profits. Tristan and I are connected over LinkedIn. So with that, hello, Tristan, and welcome to Talk to Brazil. Thank you very much for having me. Looking forward to having a chat with you today. And for our listeners, I'm talking, this is Wednesday evening in Brazil, and Tristan is Thursday morning in Australia. So Correct. Tristan is a man of the future, right? You'd, you'd be surprised. I get that so many times. People say that I'm living in the future. Well, I say that because what I tell people here uh, in Brazil, that we actually get the remainder of everybody else's day. Uh, <laughs> the leftovers. Yeah, we'd get the leftovers. So when we wake up, you know, three quarters of the population's already had their day. They're almost concluding business, right? So here we are in Brazil, ready to, you know, for dinner, ready to go to bed, and you're just starting out on a challenging day, right? That that must be why you stay up. Brazilians stay up all night because it's daytime everywhere else. So you're just <laughs> used to. <laughs> we have to be in touch, right? That's it. <laughs> well, Tristan, I want you to help our listeners, right? Uh, the question to you today is: How can one grow and simplify a business? in a complex world today that changes every day? You know what? That's uh, probably one of the toughest questions going around. And one of the things that leads to so much overwhelm and anxiety uh, in people, both in their personal and professional lives. And it's, it's amazing how we as a human being or as people like to make things a lot more complex and than what they actually need to be so it's it's just natural for us to make things so complex that we become overwhelmed and don't make any progress and don't grow and stay stuck and become stagnant and what i like to do and i like to use this both personally and professionally is Talk to people about what is the end in mind? What is your end goal? What is your – what do you actually want to achieve business-wise um, and personally? And what is this – and then I just say we work on the simplest way to get there. I know, I know this is actually cutting it really short, but so many people are like, oh, what if I do this and what if I do that? And it's like, no, you, you've said – this is your end goal. Let's focus on your end goal rather than rather than doing 50 other different things at the same time. Uh, I'm not sure if you've come across some, something no, similar. No, I do. Many people, I've actually been accused of doing that, of, you know, just doing, you know, too many things on the, on the plate. And uh, uh, many times people say, you need to focus, you need to focus. And, yeah. Uh, sometimes... Uh, and in a world, and even even Brazil specific, where things do change rather quickly, uh, things are up and down. And, and I, I agree with you. We tend to make simple things very complex. And many times, I think we get the feeling that the more complex we make it, the more people will think that it's worth. There's more a higher price. I don't know. Yeah, uh, and and I think also. The other thing is because we're so connected these days as well, uh, we have to be so reactive. And by being connected and reactive, we jump from one thing to the next as well, which makes it more complex. But one thing I found, and really through my podcast, I interviewed people really throughout the world. uh, And one of the things of trying to adjust to time 
uh, is that there's business everywhere all the time. Uh, I might be sleeping, uh, but you're awake. Uh, you might Correct. be sleeping, and I'm awake, and somebody else is awake, and business does happen 24-7. But you mentioned something that I think is very important. You talk about the personal life, right, of what I've seen in some of the things that you've sent me, uh, of valuing, let's call it the relaxed time, right? Uh, and yeah. Sometimes I feel myself just caught up in 24-7, And I'm not really sure what it is to relax anymore. No matter what, there's going to be something to do tomorrow. And uh, there's going to be work to do tomorrow. Sometimes it doesn't matter if it doesn't happen today. Uh, So we actually do need to take time out and enjoy with our friends and our loved ones because that's where we get our, um, our energy from to be able to to be more focused, to, to be more effective. And well, that becomes a, an important part of business itself because business is with people. Yeah. hundred, hundred percent. So, uh, unless, unless you're only dealing with computers, you're dealing with emotions as well. So, uh, and if you can't imagine, manage your emotions and your feelings, you're not going to, you're not going to be able to make the progress that, that you desire. Hey, well, small businesses in Australia, and what, that's one of your folks, I think, assisting small businesses. Uh, and small is also relative. I'm sure a small business in Australia may be a medium-sized business here in Brazil. Uh, but is the drive from yeah. the person having a small business, do they dedicate themselves 24-7? How, how do they separate their time there? You know what? Uh, so... What I'm going to classify a small business is probably sub five million in revenue, and uh, sorry, let's say so, yeah, approximately sub five million in revenue and and less than twenty staff. And a lot of the time, the business owners have this incredible drive to achieve, but because they've got this incredible drive, they get they get so stuck in in uh, in achieving their business goals that things fall by the wayside. They, uh, they lose friends, they lose family, uh, and, and then one day they wake up, either they, they end up being burnt out or, or all of the relationships have, have whittled away, uh, which, is, which is really quite sad because at the end of the day, we're here, business is here to serve us rather than us serving business. But does your when does your day stop in 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 Melbourne? Is it typical yeah, that you know, a, everybody's out there maybe having a beer or a pint at five p.m.? Okay, okay, so people will will jump on their phone first thing in the morning, six a.m. to check their emails, mm-hmm. and people will still be responding to, especially senior business people, will still be responding to emails at at ten and eleven o'clock at night. Uh, with not everyone, but um, with the advent of internet on the mobile phone people really struggle to switch off so even if you leave at the office at 3 or 4 p.m uh you 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 still be checking your phone at dinner time well you have clients uh throughout the world don't you correct how do you adjust to all those different times so i'm i'm talking to you from melbourne and you're in brazil it's 9 a.m for me so i i set my I've got limits that I, if a client wants to work with me, it has to be during my working hours. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to start at 7 a.m. But if I start at 7 a.m. on a day, that means I'm switching off by 4 p.m. that day. Mm -hmm. So I I set boundaries. And as soon as I set boundaries and communicate them, people understand. And I've seen that. And then you set up your schedule. You have your calendar working within that frame. So that's your availability. And you show that. Correct, and and if people want to work with me, they have to fit in with that. So, uh, often majority of the world, I can fit in within my working hours. Um, it might mean that that it's a tiny bit early or a tiny bit late for me, and vice versa with the other one. But I'm not going to be personally. I'm not going to be working at eight or nine o'clock at night. It's just not sustainable. Mm-hmm. Well, I found that I have to adjust that the same way. 
Uh, and I agree. But uh, Brazil is sort of a late evening. Most people today in, the, mm. in Sao Paulo and Campinas are still stuck in traffic right now trying to get somewhere. And generally working hours finish at about 6 p.m. So yeah. it's really difficult even to get home at 7. Uh, yeah, wow. So, but that, that that's the adjusting part. Yeah, each each region has has different work work zones or time zones that they work in. So that's one thing. But a big thing going back to the original question, uh, we need to simplify and not and and just think about what our what do we actually want to achieve uh, professionally and personally, and and don't get distracted by shiny objects because as soon as we get distracted by shiny objects, we're going to go off on a tangent. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to what we put in our mind. We think about something that we want to achieve and it sounds really complex, but as soon as we put it on paper, nine times out of 10, we look at it and like, wow, that's nowhere near as complex as I, as I was thinking. The, the human mind is amazing in some ways, but it's really good at making, making you think things are more complex than what they are. So back to the planning, I, I see on your site and also LinkedIn, you, you mentioned financial modeling and also growth planning. Uh, yeah. And planning is a central part of anything. So if you can't put on a piece of paper, it's something to look at and something to relate to. Yeah, it's it's not real otherwise. So I've got a I've got a massive whiteboard behind me, and and that's got got what I want to achieve in business and in life, and what my milestones are for the year. And I know if I if I'm working towards them, uh, I'm going to be happy. And I I if they're not on the white, I look back and on that whiteboard, and, and I'm like, if. And I think the task that I'm working on, on now, does that work towards any of what's on my whiteboard? And if it's not, I, I need to stop doing that because it's not in my greater plan. And that's where where simplification comes in. Mm-hmm. So that's where change comes in. So you're, you're, not, you're not chiseling into a granite wall. You're writing on a whiteboard so you can change it. Yeah, yes. So because at the end of the day, you do need to change it some change things sometimes. So I plan, plan the best best laid plans may need to change at times. But as part of, uh, of your management techniques, or is that taking what may be simple and trying to make it even more simple? So it's, what, what's really interesting is, uh, let's say I'm starting to work with a client. I'll, I'll work out with them what their current situation is, where they are right now, because we need to know what the groundwork's like. And then the next step is working out what the end goal is, what the what the business's ultimate objective is. Mm-hmm. Uh, so many times in business, even businesses with 50, 100, 200 people, um, they'll come to me and say, we just want to make money. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> you want to... <laughs> and make more of it every day, right? Yeah, yeah, that's it. So, so many businesses get into like I would think we're good at digital marketing and we want to make money, and that's not really going to cut it in in the world today. You've actually got to have a a more refined ultimate objective, which um, in reality is your vision and mission. Because once you've got that vision and mission, it's a lot easier to to stay aligned to it and to right. bring to bring your staff on board with it as well. Because mm-hmm. if they because um, your staff are going to be getting paid a salary and and if they're not aligned with that vision and mission or that ultimate objective, they're not going to go out of their way to, to, be, to be better at what they do because right. no matter what, they're going to get paid. Right. So that's really one of the biggest things is to actually have everyone sailing their ship in the same direction. Well, we, we see that quite often here in Brazil with the younger generation. Obviously, money is important, uh, but it's not the most important thing. And, Correct. Uh, the younger generation really is looking for a better lifestyle. Uh, yeah. They want something back, and you mentioned sustainability. They're looking uh, really to a company and to themselves uh, in, in a different fashion than older generation has. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's changing like that in Australia as well. So, money isn't the be all and end, end all. It's it's uh, it's the experiences as well, and you can you can achieve experiences without money. 
So, uh, so when, what are some of the, the productivity and motivation methods then that can be used? Obviously, money, uh, money talks, <laughs> but it's not the only thing. How, how do you motivate a staff? That's really interesting. So I was last late last year. Um, so for people listening, late last year was 2019. That's 2020 now. I was in in Malaysia uh, speaking at an event and in front in front of about five or six hundred business owners, and it was all about about leadership. And the best way to motivate your staff is to to align them with with the business's ultimate objective. And once they're aligned with it, show how that ultimate objective is going to benefit them. So the business has got that vision and that we know how, with the vision or ultimate objective, we know how um, it's going to benefit the business. But we need to, to, to motivate the employees. We need to show how that, um, that vision is going to uh, benefit our employees and benefit our staff members and benefit the customers. And once... Once the the staff understand that, that's when motivation clicks in, and they're going to take ownership of their actions and drive the business forward. Well, today, really, I, uh, what I hear you saying when you're you're selling your company, you're not only selling the product or your service, you have, you're out there promoting it to everybody, to the customer. You're you're promoting it to eventual persons that you want to onboard. Uh, to the community, so you you have it's really three hundred and sixty. Totally, hundred percent. And if you look after your your staff first, they're going to end up looking after your customers more as well. What is the general? Do you have generational gaps in your types of clients? Who who are the types of clients that look towards you? That's a that's a really interesting question. I've uh, I've ended up working. The major- like there's a good percentage of my clients that have ended up being Serbian based women business owners. And that's just, uh, I think that's a bit of a coincidence, mm-hmm. but what it does say is a uh, majority of my clients have ended up being in the 30 to 45 age bracket that are, that are very driven and motivated, mm-hmm. but need that direction and guidance. So they, they want to achieve in business, right. uh, and they've had initial success in business, but they need they need support to go to that next level. Mm-hmm. Or they've had had failure as well. So uh, you you grow Correct. through failing. So that's it. That's it. And and they're not afraid to to put their hand up and say, "Hey, I need support and guidance, or right. I need some assistance." There's so many people that 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 uh, their ego is too big and they just don't, they won't put their hand up. <laughs> well, I've heard that too. The ego becomes a big wall. Yeah. The ego, the, I think there's a book called Ego is the Enemy. Uh, and I so, think it is. Uh, and it really yeah. is. Uh, people can't yeah. see, you know, uh, their nose gets stuck in front of their eyes, I think. Yes. And, and, and it holds people back. That's it. But you're, you you said that thirty to forty that statistically that seems to and what I've seen recently that's sort of the startup age actually. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So in in Australia you probably um, you've probably had five to ten years of business experience, mm-hmm. um, a working business, and then you you want to branch out on your own. So you you might be you might be two or three years into your own business in this time frame. Now you mentioned you were in Malaysia. Does that hold true there as well? So Malay, that's really interesting. So Malaysia is a really culturally different country to Australia. So mm-hmm. uh, a lot of a lot of business is medium and large business, and the the small the amount of people in small business in Malaysia is a lot lesser than say Australia or or the United States or in Europe. So uh, it's very hierarchical um, and people typically uh, tend to spend more time in these larger organisations mm-hmm. because the government, I believe the government supports these larger organisations because they're effectively knowledge process outsourcing companies where the knowledge is being transferred across the companies internationally. 
So there's a lot less support uh, mm -hmm. for the small small business industry in Malaysia, and that was one of the reasons I was over there as a as a subject matter expert to help help uh, those smaller businesses. Yeah, but that that's pretty much across the board. So you're talking about leadership, and leadership can be for all different size groups. Oh, totally, totally. So the the content that I was talking about can be used at any different level, uh, but it was it was definitely focused at um, at that smaller business level. But do you find that in terms of leadership, once you do, obviously, if you're a leader, you have followers. It's easier to start with a smaller group and then expand on that. So yeah, um, it is yes. So. Once you once you've got your followers, you're building momentum. And I was actually thinking about this this yesterday. Uh, you just have to get build momentum, gain a few results, and then you you get uh, you get more confidence. And with more confidence, you get more motivation. And then from there, uh, you're able to grow. So so with the with, with this topic in mind it's you start with a smaller amount of followers but you build this momentum and then you're you're more confident to be to uh to to be speaking in front of larger crowds or you're you're more likely to get a, a greater amount of followers so the important thing there is just to keep keep moving right keep the group moving and move with the group don't stop correct but in saying that don't mistake uh action for progress mm -hmm. so so we have to make sure that the action we're taking is allowing us to progress so uh the we have to be taking positive action or or directed action and at the same time find a way to relax correct 100 <laughs> percent. i think that's our um that's one of our biggest issues uh we, we just get so wound up with with what people uh think we should be doing not what we think we what we think we should be doing as an individual we know what we should be doing as an individual but we're too concerned about what others think about what we should be doing i think that leads to your point of building confidence if you're confident in yourself uh, and you're confident that relaxing is part of life i think that fits yeah. into a business uh more easily yeah, but also it doesn't just have to be business. It like this, it could be uh, staff as well, uh, because we need to be able to to switch off to be able to enjoy um, life. Because whilst our not, let's call it our nine to five, that's a, our nine to five has to be, and we we're going to enjoy our nine to five or our job or our business right. because we've chosen that. But at the end of the day, it's it's the people and the experiences around us that right. makes us who we are. Well, then, then that's true. You could have a business that's working three shifts, but you do have to delegate and let the second shift run the ship. 100%. And then, and then go home and relax and not be on, the, on your cell phone checking out emails. Yeah, because because I'm sure most most of the time when people go home, they've actually got a wife or a husband and children, and they should be present with them rather than, uh, check in email that could wait until tomorrow. That's true. It's actually we learn from the people we're with, and that includes being home. Yeah, I've um, we've actually got a five month old son, and we're being very, very, <laughs> well, very careful not <laughs> not to have screens around him because he he if he if we've got a screen around him, he's going to watch that and be influenced by that. Right. Um, and we don't want him seeing us on our phones uh, each evening and, right. and learning from the fact that it's okay to be on your phone all the time. Well, you mentioned that children today have become our universities. We learn more from kids than kids learn from us, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's a big thing. Actually, we do learn. Um, we, we've got the ability to learn from, from, uh, from our children. It's uh, surprising. Some people may just, uh, turn a blind eye to that, though. Ah, uh, no, I think we learn so much. And I, well, they learn actually faster than we do. Uh, mm -hmm. I think they really assimilate what's happening better than we do. Yes, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Very good. Well, Tristan, I'm sorry, we're coming to the end of our time, and I enjoy talking with you, and I know that uh, 
for you the day is long and our, and our, and our night here is coming. So I think what you need to do is to work and I need to relax then, right? <laughs> that sounds like a plan. I think that's a very good idea. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll, I'll get to work and talk to a few clients and you can probably go and, uh, go and have, a, have a beer or a wine and, and relax for the evening. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have dinner with my wife right now and I think we'll, we'll just sit down and relax. I think that's our objective for this evening, okay? Sounds like a plan. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> thank you, Trissa. Very nice talking with you. All right. Pleasure. And I want to thank our listeners as well. You can find more about Tristan Wright, and that's Tristan, T-R-I-S-T-A-N. And his last name is W-R-I-G-H-T. You can find him on LinkedIn. And also his site, which is evolvetogrow.com.au. That's E-V-O-L-V-E-T-O-G-R-O-W dot com dot A-U for Australia. And there you can download Tristan's free book. you also find other interesting material on his site. I'd like to thank you, our audience, and our sponsor, Focus MI Market Intelligence. Focus MI specializes in market research for the Brazilian agricultural market. And more about them on their site, F-O-C-U-S, mi.com and visit our website which is talk to brazil.com that's t-a-l-k the number two b-r-a-z-i-l dot com and find our previous shows of talk to brazil so remember when you talk to tom you talk to brazil and the world goodbye and thanks for listening thanks for listening to tom riach on talk to brazil the business connector to brazil